What's up guys, it's Kayla and Jim and welcome back to another Meteorology Monday. What are we talking about today? For today's tornado case study, we're going to talk about a tornadic event that included being part of a May 21st through 26, 2011 tornado outbreak across the Midwestern and Southern regions of the United States. Being the first EF5 tornado to strike Oklahoma since 1999 having winds measured by University of Oklahoma mobile Doppler radar at 295 miles per hour, 475 kilometers per hour. Can you guess which tornadic event that was? If you happen to guess the May 24th, 2011 El Reno EF5, you would be correct. Also, if you looked at the title of the video, you probably knew what it was, so. <laughs> Not to be confused with the 2013 El Reno, Oklahoma tornado that we've already done a case study on and it'll pop up in the corner here if you wanna check that out after watching this video. For those of you who are subscribed to our YouTube channel already, and if you're not, what are you doing? <laughs> Go down there and press the subscribe button. We did a poll on our YouTube to pick which case study was next. You guys said that you wanted more tornado case studies, so here we are, and you guys also picked El Reno, so. That is what we are doing today. So thank you to everyone that participated in our survey. And as we usually do, we will get into the meteorological setup for the event and then drill down to the specific storm itself. But before we get started. Like we just said, make sure that you're subscribed to our YouTube channel down below so you never miss the next Meteorology Monday or Tornado Case Study. And also give this video a like if you are liking it along the way. So let's discuss the meteorological setup for this event. On Tuesday, May 24, 2011, a strong upper-level trough was progressing eastward out of the southwestern United States toward the southern plains. As the trough moved eastward, it took on a negative tilt, an indication of a strengthening system. In the middle and upper levels of the atmosphere, a strong jet stream was rotating around the upper trough. Low pressure at the surface was strengthening rapidly as it moved from the Texas Panhandle to northwestern Oklahoma. This allowed for plenty of warm, moist, low-level air to flow northward into central Oklahoma, east of the dry line. Scattered stratus clouds were forming as well as increasing winds at the surface and aloft. The Storm Prediction Center would issue a high risk of severe storms east of the dry line for parts of south central Kansas, central and eastern Oklahoma, and extreme north central Texas. Strong to violent tornadoes were highly probable due to a stationary front expected to maintain its position over the region. Wind shear was expected to greatly increase and the strengthening trough approaching from the west. Later that morning, the tornado threat would increase to a 45% chance of strong and violent tornadoes occurring in the high-risk area. At 12.50 p.m. Central Daylight Time, the Storm Prediction Center issued a particularly dangerous situation, PDS, tornado watch for parts of central Oklahoma and northern Texas. This would include the greater Oklahoma City area. The watch would remain in effect until 10 p.m. Central Daylight Time that evening. As the day progressed, a 70 to 80 knot 500 millibar jet would move into western North Texas, and a 110 knot 300 millibar jet would move into the high plains of Texas. As these jet maxima approached, the surface low would deepen to about 992 millibars across northwestern Oklahoma and southwestern Kansas. The very high instability and wind shear would line up perfectly for a high risk of severe weather with very dry air and gusty winds following behind the dry line. So as you can see from the synoptic setup of the day, SPC was expecting a high risk. The PDS tornado watch went out. Um, they were expecting many violent tornadoes on this day. So unlike some of the other case studies that we've done, SPC and the NWS offices were very much expecting something bad to happen. So let's put this into context. We talk about a 45% chance of strong to violent tornadoes. Now, mm -hmm. on a scale of you know, 1 to 100, uh, you know, you'd think 45% is still on the lower end of the scale. But to put it into the proper perspective, they could issue tornado watches based on a 2% probability that there'll be tornadoes forming. So for there to be a 45% chance and not only 45% chance, but for strong and violent tornadoes. It just goes to show how much the system has set up to produce a high risk of strong and violent tornadoes this day. So let's get into the specifics of this storm itself. 
Early in the afternoon, thunderstorms would develop over western Oklahoma. Due to the high instability and wind shear in place, these storms quickly became supercells as they moved northeastward across western Oklahoma ahead of the dry line. Between 2.30 and 3.30 p.m., the storms would produce estimated 1 and 3 quarter inch to 3 inch size hail in Hobart, Eakley, and Fay, Oklahoma. One of these storms developed a strong low-level rotation and prompted the first tornado warning over Blaine County, Oklahoma around 3.41 p.m. Central Daylight Time. The storm produced a large and violent tornado about six miles south of Hinton, Oklahoma, moving northeast at 40 miles per hour. This path would take it on a course towards the areas of Bridgeport, Calumet, Cedar Lake, Geary, and Hinton. At 3.50 p.m. Central Daylight Time, the National Weather Service Doppler radar indicated a tornado just southeast of Hinton. As the storm continued to move northeast at 40 miles per hour, the tornado was predicted to cross Interstate 40 between mile markers 111 and 106. The National Weather Service issued a severe weather statement indicating this movement and also included that the storm likely contains damaging hail the size of baseballs or even larger. For the next hour, the large and violent tornado would continue into northeastern Canadian, southeastern Kingfisher, and Logan counties, causing widespread EF3 and EF4 damage. At 4 p.m., the National Weather Service in Norman, Oklahoma, issued a tornado warning for Canadian County in central Oklahoma. The storm producing the tornado was located about 9 miles southwest of Calumet and was still tracking northeast at 40 miles per hour. It would soon approach Calumet, Cedar Lake, El Reno, and northwestern Oklahoma City and surrounding areas, including Interstate 40. At 4.13 p.m., a large and violent tornado was located just south of Calumet, moving east-northeast at 35 miles per hour. The towns of El Reno, Yukon, and Piedmont were in its crosshairs. The Weather Service was urging folks to take shelter now. The path of the tornado would be forecasted to cross Interstate 40 between mile markers 110 and 136. At the nearby Oklahoma Mesonet site, five miles west-northwest of El Reno, the highest wind gust ever recorded at an Oklahoma Mesonet site would be measured as the now EF5 tornado was tearing a path just southeast of that location. Around 4.18 p.m., the El Reno, Oklahoma Mesonet site recorded a wind speed of 61 miles per hour. At 4.20 p.m., the wind significantly increased to 131 miles per hour. One minute later, the wind peaked at 151 miles per hour, then decreased to 91 miles per hour at 4.22 p.m. The tornado caused considerable damage to the area surrounding the Mesonet site as it moved northeast. At 4.23 p.m., the tornado was located five miles southwest of Concho, moving east at 30 miles per hour. El Reno and northwestern Oklahoma City along with many other surrounding areas were still in danger as this storm approached. The storm was now forecasted to cross Interstate 40 between mile markers 115 and 136. Along this path, the tornado destroyed numerous trees. Many of them were debarked before crossing Interstate 40. Three people died in vehicles near the I-40 Calumet exit, and two more people died just northeast of that location. Cars were thrown thousands of feet from their original location. Just after crossing I-40, Mobile radar measured winds greater than 210 miles per hour just above the surface. As the storm continued moving in a general east-northeast direction, the violent tornado would move over northern parts of El Reno, producing widespread EF4 damage. The Falcon Lake neighborhood near the Kingfisher County border had significant damage, and two children died at that location. As the tornado continued moving northeastward, it would debark numerous trees and produce EF3 damage to buildings in its path. The tornado would continue moving northeast into Logan County, causing EF2 and EF3 damage, mostly to outbuildings and trees. However, several manufactured homes were destroyed as well. Two additional fatalities occurred near Cashin. Large, high transmission line trusses fell due to the tornado. As the tornado approached Guthrie, several buildings were affected by EF2 to EF3 winds, causing most of their exterior walls to collapse. Only the interior walls remained intact. The tornado then moved west and north of the town center and dissipated northeast of Guthrie with some minor tree damage. In summary, this tornado was on the ground for one hour and 45 minutes, traveling a total of 63 miles. 
the maximum width was 1,760 yards, or one mile. The Mesonet station at El Reno recorded a wind gust of 151 miles per hour and a one minute average wind speed of 115 miles per hour as the tornado passed by, setting the record for the highest wind speed ever observed by the Oklahoma Mesonet. University of Oklahoma mobile Doppler radar measured winds up to 295 miles per hour within the tornado as it crossed Interstate 40. This was the first EF-5 tornado to strike Oklahoma since 1999. Hail up to three inches in diameter were reported. The tornado killed nine people and injured another 181 along its path. The timing of this tornado occurred at one of the worst times possible as it was happening during rush hour. So one of the things we discussed was the Oklahoma Mesonet. What is the Oklahoma Mesonet? Well, we actually went out to an Oklahoma Mesonet site earlier this year. We've got a video on it that'll pop up in this corner if you're interested in seeing it. But the Oklahoma Mesonet is basically this big observing station that is all across Oklahoma for events like this to measure wind speeds and temperatures and humidity. It's got every parameter measuring device that you could possibly think of on this really tall tower. These mesonet sites are in a grid all over Oklahoma and they're there not only to measure like direct hits from tornadoes like this one, but also the pre-storm environment, what's happening after the tornado goes by, and this one taking pretty much a direct hit measured the highest wind speeds recorded by the Oklahoma mesonet at 151 miles per hour. One of the things you're probably wondering is, is wait a second, this one is rated an EF5, but the 2013 El Reno tornado was only rated an EF3. Why is that? Well, one of the reasons is because of the buildings and everything that the 2011 tornado actually wound up hitting. So again, based on what the Enhanced Fujita scale, how it measures damage and can rate wind speeds, the 2013 tornado wound up not hitting as many things, and so therefore, even though it may have been recorded as having EF5 winds, it didn't really hit anything according to the EF scale to allow for it to be rated EF5. So what it did hit only produced EF3 damage, whereas this tornado in 2011 actually wound up hitting buildings and debarking yep. trees and throwing cars and doing all that, which gave it the EF5 rating. Yep, the EF scale is a damage scale. So even if you have Dopplers out there measuring EF5 winds, you can't always use that to say that the tornado was an EF5 because the definition of the EF scale is based on the damage that it produces. So even if you measure EF5 type winds, but you only see EF3 damages, the tornado is only gonna get rated in EF3. But Fortunately, at least we have the technology that we can go out with mobile radar mm -hmm. and some of the other stationary weather service radars and we can measure the winds within those storms yep. and be able to get an accurate wind measurement even though it didn't hit anything. It is good to record that information as well. So there you have the May 24th, 2011 El Reno, Oklahoma EF5 tornado. Again, if you like what you saw, be sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, subscribe down below, it really helps the channel out a lot. Follow us over on our social media, Facebook and Instagram if you want to see more of our weather adventures. All the things from SPC and the National Weather Service offices that we use to put together this case study will be linked down below if you're interested in checking that out for yourself. And as always, our website and our school of weather will be linked down there too if you want to learn about basics and foundations of meteorology, but you don't really want to go to school for it or you're not sure about it, check out the school weather down below. Until next time, I'm Kayla. And I'm Jim. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you at the next Meteorology Monday. EF5 tornado. Golly, that was a mouthful. <laughs> hey, I've got an idea. So there you have it, the May 24th, 2011. L. Reno. Oklahoma. E. F. 5. Tornado. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> <laughs>